Hello, welcome to Web Chat Wednesdays. I'm Chris and I'm a studio guide at the Long Beach Public Library and I'm here with Artie. Hello everyone, welcome to Web Chat Wednesday. Our special guest today is Seon Cypressus. Uh, Seon is a local artist and community leader in Long Beach. He has worked on a variety of art and community projects in the city of Long Beach. And Seon, that was just a brief description. Is there anything you wanna add? I'm a part-time lecturer at Castle Long Beach as well. Uh, and um, yeah, no, just, you, you got most of it, uh, local resident and uh, artist and community activist, as well as uh, just working in a nonprofit at United Cambodian Community. A lot of stuff going on, that's awesome. Uh, so the first thing uh, we wanted to talk about was your art. And um, how long have you been making art? Oh my gosh, uh, I, I probably typically, you know, what people say, uh, I was probably born an artist. I started make, I just love crayon colorful things. Uh, when I was uh, little, I just wanted to actually literally eat them because they just look like candy. <laughs> yeah. um, but I really uh, started off at a very young age, I want to say about five or seven when I had a chance to, when I realized that, that you can make art and draw things to occupy your time. Uh, and it was just a great way for me to escape uh, from my reality at the time when I lived in, uh, so I, I, just a quick background, I, I came from Cambodia, uh, you know, genocide going on in the 75 uh, to 79. Uh, my eight, uh, uh, 10 people in my family, eight siblings and pa two parents. Uh, so we were living in a refugee camp and that was like a really a great way for me as a child making artwork uh, and I made this uh, cutout puppet and I had a like a shadow puppet and then, and I was entertaining a person younger than myself and then and that other individual was completely mesmerized and I myself I surprised myself that I made this thing that was actually entertaining and it's like oh but the, the way the shadow was cast was just amazing you know and um, and I just really uh, happy in the like the impact that it had on myself and this other kid yeah i'm sure that could be like a big influence when you're young and you make something and someone like reacts so positively and i could also see like yeah that you were in this like harsh reality and you were you know you were creating your own realities and sharing it with other people and that's beautiful um what are some of the reoccurring themes that you explore through your art I think, you know, a lot of it is, um, so, you know, when people go through uh, something as harsh as, you know, having to abandon your country in, in order to survive because your life depends, depends on it. Uh, and so a lot of the theme for me is the interconnectedness of um, uh, traumatic memories and uh, worldwide, perhaps, um, um education that i do for myself and a lot of it just seems to be connecting towards like um the vietnam war that led up to the genocide uh in cambodia uh and then the uh the migration so a lot of those just overlap so what i tend to do is uh to try to make sense and connect uh as a memory kind of a memory project and that happens in a variety of ways. For example, um, you know, me coming to this country because of the, the war that originally started with Vietnam, and then it destabilized that area of Southeast Asia, Cambodia, Laos, and Thailand was, I think it was very <laughs> protected for whatever reason. Um, and, um, and then when I come to this country, um, I was able to, see the results of what took place. Um, I, I'm, can I share a screen real quick? It's just an image. Yeah, it was an ad um, the next. Definitely yeah. share some, some a piece that kind of covers what you're talking about. So, sorry, this image uh, is a little bit small. Um, this one's a little better, but not great. 
So I started seeing all these signs, you know, on the street, even till today. And this was a this I was done this I did this five years ago, and paying uh, Vietnam vets about um, uh, paying for their lunch and just talking to them a little bit and introducing myself. Um, I probably met just five people, um, and then I asked them if I can just take a picture of them together. And this individual was very annoyed and angry at the same time, but he just felt like he wanted lunch. Uh, and this gentleman was a little bit um, nicer, really happy-go-lucky guy. Kind of reminds me of my dad a little bit because he's just so jolly. Um, mm. And so, but the but the underlining of them all is, you know, they also suffer, suffer from mental health issue and um, perhaps lack of support or um, isolation from their family. And then as I also find out now, the, uh, such a divide of that war uh, uh, for that time. Yeah, I didn't know you were into photography too. And I think that's like an, an interesting project that, that you spearheaded. Um, no, well, I'm into photography as like a document to record something, but I'm not a photographer at all. It's just like the idea of the art as as a way to share the story, which ties back into like my ex experience as a refugee that got displaced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favorite medium to work with? So I, I do. Um, I really enjoy working with my hand. Um, uh, so I'm just going to keep continuing to share a uh, screen yeah. with you all. Okay. Definitely. Can you see this image? Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is a better one. So I, I really enjoy working with my hand. A lot of my growing up is my, my parents are farmers. So we uh, live in the countryside. My background, uh, formerly I, I study as a uh, studio artist. So I studied painting at Cal State Long Beach. And then when I went to Claremont, I, uh, Claremont Graduate University, I um, got more into like uh, tactile and uh, sculptural images. And this piece probably came out after graduate school. And it's, it's basically uh, ready-made materials, some found garage uh, uh, materials that was in the garage, like, you know, house paint. Um, and I got some those flower things on on the back is from a, a thrift shop. And um, so I repurpose a lot of images, uh, material as well. That's awesome. It looks, even the shadow looks like really beautiful. And yeah. I looked at your site and that was, that was one of my, my favorite pieces. Thanks. But yeah, I, also, um, I really enjoyed, like, I thought your paintings were really awesome too. Like, I think it's really interesting how you, include like religious imagery into some of the paintings. Yeah, <laughs> that's another thing too. So when I came to this country, a lot of people came the same way I did, whether it's, so it's either through a sponsorship from a uh, religious organization or family that have enough money or support to bring you over or philanthropists. Uh, but for my family, we, came over and we re are really grateful. We were, uh, we arrived through the Lutheran church in the Midwest in Iowa. And then you become, you kind of relinquish your religion from where you came from. And now you've all of a sudden become like a Chris Christian family. <laughs> so uh, even just kind of in that uh, transition, it could, you know, it could really mind a lot of people. <laughs> Sorry. So, Okay. Um, yeah. And then uh, people could have a loss of identity more than one ways, you know, identity as in cultural, et ethnically identity, and then placement and now religion. So you're kind of almost like completely trying to re refigure who you are. Yeah, especially at such a young age, I can imagine how that could be like really shocking or confusing. Um, does this piece kind of reflect any of those feelings? You talked about like how you made it, but is there like a certain message behind this? Um, I, I, well, 
you know, the thing is, I, I, I think with art, I, I want people to take in the image for themselves and then decipher what they see in it. But for me, just the overall, uh, like a contemplation uh, in this piece uh, of what this figure is thinking about or doing or carrying. And, and so it's, you know, as what I've shared about my background a little bit with, with you all, those are probably some of the stuff and the image and the influence that goes into making this piece. Thank you for sharing. Um, yeah. Thanks for this. Yeah, I like I like that you leave leave the uh, the experience up to the viewer. You know, I could go multiple directions. You know, depending on my state of mind in the moment that I'm experiencing your sculpture. So, um, I know you painted some walls around Long Beach. How did you first get involved with murals and public art? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, let's see. The way that came about. Uh, so when I started working with, uh, with UCC. Uh, so I was uh, back at corporate world. I used to work for a phone company for like 16 years. Okay. So I was going in and out of, you know, Cubeville for, for all that time. And then when, uh, when that uh, didn't work out anymore, I uh, was jumping from job to job. And then I've landed at, uh, here at this nonprofit here in Long Beach, which is a, a great place. Um, and, um, and at the, at that time, 2017, uh, the arts council had this, uh, Cambodia town mural project going on. And then they, you know, put a call out to artists, but, uh, I, I believe within that project that they had already connected with the uh, UCC to lead one of the mural. And then, so my director uh, had asked me, you know, okay, well, we're gonna do one mural <laughs> and you're gonna lead it pretty much. Uh, and I had, I had no idea what the thing was, what mural was and how to even look at it. Needless to say, the, I had a huge anxiety over it uh, because I wasn't sure if I was able to do it or not. So I spoke to a couple of friends uh, throughout Long Beach that did murals and just ask them how to do it and you know what to expect. Um, and then uh, through a few uh, community meetings, because uh, it had to be like community mural meeting. And so I, we had like five meetings uh, and various uh, rendition of the rendering of what the wall and what people wanted to see. Um, and then, uh, and we came up with, with that image. So the, the wall is um, uh, 30 feet by 20 feet, I believe. So it's like a two-story building um, and it's pretty wide. And, uh, and we did that, uh, we completed it about three months. So it's like throughout the whole summer. Uh, and that was a very hot summer because the way the sun was setting, you know, it was like baked uh, there, so. It was, was a really fun experience. Is the, is the wall still up in Long Beach? Yes, uh, the wall is at United Cambodian Communities building, okay. the second one, not the old building. So it's on the corner of Dawson and Anaheim Avenue, right across the street from the May Center. Oh, nice. Yeah, I haven't, I've heard a lot about the May Center. I haven't got to check it out yet. Oh, by the way, I just brought up the uh, image for the mural. Can I share it? Yeah, definitely. Sure. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of funky things on this wall uh, with lots of windows and wires and I mean bars. Uh, so I was able to, I don't know, try to overpower that with other images and larger image of Cam Cambodian uh, Apsara dancer behind it, Angkor Wat. And to the left of it is the, uh, the Bayon, uh, which typically has for facing, things facing north, south, east, and west. Uh, and the animals at the bottom, by the way, are animals that are being protected or on the edge of extinctions, such as the Arawadi dolphins, which lives in the Mekong. And they could also go into the uh, salt water and fresh water. Isn't that cool? That is cool. Um, and the elephants and the 
this crane, there's a, a specific name for them. It's escaping my mind now. Um, and the turtles, which is very barely visible at the bottom, are um, the royal turtle. Back in the days, only kings and queens and royal family were able to eat their eggs. I didn't know that. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> must be must be really good eggs. <laughs> so, yeah. So this was the the first community wall that we had talked about. You guys have asked about earlier. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a really great wall. Like that whole that whole intersection, that corner is so activated. It's a really active uh, corner off of Anaheim. So I'm wondering, Sayon, how do you approach starting a, a new creative project? Um, uh, part depends on, on what it is. Uh, for example, you know, if it's going to be a mural, um, and if you have to work with businesses or the local area, um, I, I tend to ask, I'd rather ask around if it's public art, you know, just to get people's buy-in. Um, but if I'm doing like my studio work where I have to, um, uh, you know, be more, inward or cerebral or something, I would do a little bit more research um, and, um, and do a lot of self-reflection. Um, and that tends to inform a lot of, uh, make my work stronger, I think. Um, and so I'm gonna share with you right now um, a video that I had thought about for a long time before I made it. This is one of the piece I did when I was in graduate school. Sorry, it's, it's a little blurry. And it was in a dark room too. It's called Catching Fireflies. And this was at the Huntington Beach uh, Art Gallery, I guess, there. Um, so it's five feet by five feet wide and it goes all the way up to the ceiling. So, it's, so everything on this piece is made by my hair. And, uh, and it's made by hair glitter and then glue. So I tied a bunch of my hairs together <laughs> and then it made this net. net. And the, the idea behind this was, uh, you know, growing up Buddhist, my mom was always pounding on us about, you know, doing the right thing, asking for forgiveness, um, making up for your sins. And then, <laughs> and then, um, through uh, making up for your sin, for the wrong things that you've done, perhaps before you, you know, if you are gonna be cast through into hell, there would be the safety net that would catch you and prevent you from falling through. That's, that's beautiful. It's amazing that you're able to make something that reflects that. And it's amazing that it's made out of your hair. <laughs> yeah literally it's just like got into my head and i'm using my head to to create this thing and even really through like the quality of the video like you could still see like how shiny and sparkly it is um i can only imagine how you would store that is it just like completely destroyed now or do you have it put away oh my gosh uh, i haven't put away it it if if you saw this thing, I, you would probably just walk away from it. It's like, what the hell is that? Is that a rat or you know? Um, but yeah, it it'll probably come back together once. Uh, and this was done um, two thousand seven. Yes. Awesome. Um, has the pandemic affected like the way you make art, or have you like not been making art or let making more art since the pandemic? Yeah, this is uh, this is really uh, anxiety to the max time. <laughs> um, I, I, so as far as creative mind goes uh, and generating new ideas, um, I'm a little bit interrupted, you know, to be honest, uh, in that area. But I, uh, I'm building on previous body of work that I've started. Uh, couple years ago so I'm just going to expand on that and and continue to make but it uh but it's really a, a slow process right now yeah awesome thank you are there any uh are there any Cambodian artists you want to shout out 
So let's see, uh, a filmmaker, you know, uh, Katie So, um, she, uh, she's also directing the Cambodian Town Film Festival, co-director, -co co-founder. Mm -hmm. um, so she's amazing. Uh, she's amazing in making the film as well as the community work uh, here in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. A few other folks, a um, uh, couple rappers, CS, you know, he's also a, a wonderful rapper. Um, pretty much the same age as, as me, probably a few years younger, but um, we uh, I, we met a couple years ago when he volunteered for um, the, to help us organize the uh, Beach Roots. Beach Roots was this um, community uh, folks that grew up in Long Beach or people that connects to Long Beach and then they would do like a performance. It was like a music performance. We had a very diverse group that performed the, for a couple years and it was just and it was free you know to, to the public. Um, so he helped really organize that as well. Yeah, I didn't know there was a Cambodian film festival in Long Beach, and ah. that's that's awesome. And I didn't know about that other event. You're involved in a lot of stuff, um, which brings me to my next question. I had a question about um, the Ghost Art Project. Um, oh, cool! Yeah, you created a project called Ghost, and can you tell us a little bit about that project? Oh uh, yes, yes. Before I go on the uh, Cambodian. Uh, Tom Film Festival, by the way, it's open to everybody. Uh, just because it has Cambodian, you know, title on it, it does not mean it's exclusive. So if anyone, it, it usually happens yearly, and um, and it's uh, if anyone is connected to that project, you can enter your film and submit that to be viewed. By the way, so it's a great way to collaborate with other people in the community. Mm hmm. Uh, so yes, the Ghost Project, um, you know, it was founded by um, by this lady, Denise Scott, when I, um, when I got, uh, got out of graduate school in 2008, uh, 2007, and then when she approached me and we just had started becoming friends and she said, you know, I'm doing this uh, project in Cambodia and... Um, we, oh, that's right. Originally it started off as a global hybrid. Uh, that's where the interchangeable happened. Um, and um, so we wanted to encourage um, Cambodian artists over there and Korean artists and perhaps uh, artists that, that lived in Asia to, uh, to work together. Um, and plus, uh, we wanted to do that because um, a lot of the uh, artists were killed off uh, in Cambodia. So we wanted to, um, I guess, revitalize that again um, and encourage people to make, to make work. Uh, and she would give out her own money uh, as stipends for folks to buy materials and things like that over there. Because honestly, <laughs> When, when you're in a third world country, you don't want to be making art, you know, when you don't even get paid for it, right? When people need to pay for materials, their time. Um, and so, and that was 2008. And, but I was really hesitant at first because of the history that I just shared with you all earlier. Why the hell would I go back to a country that was trying to kill me? Um, but uh, I'm glad I went back and uh, was able to face my own fear uh, and um, to be able to connect with the growth in the early times uh, in 2008. But I went back again last year. So it's like roughly 10 years later and, uh, and to see how much growth has happened. So Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Do you have any plans to continue the ghost project? If, if I did, I think it would have to either just expand and change the title or something. Um, it, uh, yeah, just, just the word ghost in it or something um, just takes it into a different realm. And uh, yeah, and I, I, yeah, I want a little bit of something more exciting to do uh, if we're going to go that direction again. Yeah. 
you did mention the global uh, hybrids and I had a question about that. Uh, what piece of art did you exchange and why did you choose that particular piece? Because I, I believe you also participated in it, correct? I did. It's uh, so Denise got, she's also an artist when she did, uh, did that. Um, so we both uh, participated as artists and as well as uh, bringing uh, local people there together. And that was, you know, when we had a show in Cambodia and then we would bring it here to Long Beach as well. So we had it at the um, Second City Art Council. At the time it was off of Alamitos uh, years ago. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we had it again at, um, uh, at Hancock University, which is on the corner of 15th and Long Beach Boulevard. I don't know, it's some weird building now. I don't know if they're using it anymore. Um, but I, 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 I took, so another thing was we had to be able to make sure it was portable, right? Um, we had to make sure, because uh, we were traveling and we don't want to carry all these paintings or whatever, bulky things with us. Um, and back at that time, Cambodia wasn't really prepared. You know, they didn't even have materials much to hang things kind of. So, um, but I took that, hanging sculpture that I just shared with you all because I really just folded up <laughs> and I got there. I just kind of unpacked the the hair and glitter. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it would have been funny if like customs opened it up. They're like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> um, so earlier you mentioned that, you know, you're affiliated with the United Cambodian community. Um, can you explain what that is and how, like how you got involved with that initially? Yes, um, I'd be happy to. So I, I was brought in to lead the uh, the Living Arts Long Beach uh, program, which is an after school uh, art class um, for for local uh, Long Beach students, and um, so I I really enjoyed it. You know, I really put it. I was only there like 15 hours a week that time, <laughs> but I'm sure I must've worked 60 because of, of, I had no idea what I was getting into. And then I had to start this program and then recruit students, connect with school, local schools. And then um, at that time we were, we just really had like a shoestring budget to work with too. So um, yeah, it, it was just a lot of work and um, and I, I think uh, now the amount of support and uh, we get from the uh, Arts Council of Long Beach and then the LA Arts Commission as well. So that has really helped. Awesome. Um, what is the mission of the program Living Arts Long Beach? And what are some of the things that the students would normally do? So the mission is to, um, to, to mentor a student about uh, how to become an artist and what's involved in being an artist. Um, having, say, a portfolio. Um, a lot of these are, are high school. Uh, some of them do come from Renaissance High School. So they have a lot of art making already. And some of the other students come from like an AP art class um, in their high school. And so they are pretty equipped already. Um, but we also guide them in um, college direction as well. Um, so they really just get hand, uh, hands-on uh, in doing a variety of workshops with the guest artists, artists that come in, like we've had a uh, silk screening workshop and we had um, animation. We, we had traditional like drawing and painting class. Uh, and we even had, uh, when we were meeting in person, a um, uh, a dancing class with uh, Cambodian traditional classical dance. That's like a lot. That's th those are great opportunities. It's like everywhere. Yes. I got into screen printing, you know, in community college. And oh, speaking of that, I, I learned this. See, I, I it's like, oh, now I learn how to make my own screen print as whatever T-shirts I want. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like the whole time I've been trying to read your whole T-shirt because I could only see a like a <laughs> section. All I could see was art, and I thought, okay, but there's more. <laughs> I figured eventually I'd be able to catch it. But, I need um, I need some more back to. <laughs> I, need, I don't have enough back back there. 
Yeah, I mean, it's I mean you're really, rocks. yeah, you're it, de- it does, it really does. Yeah, you guys, UCC is definitely providing a really great resource for the community. Uh, how important do you think the act of self expression is for uh, for the youth and for the elders as well? Um, I think it's very important. Um, I uh, so I, I think partly from for me uh, as well. You know, growing up, um, depending on on the environment that you grew up in, um, there could be a lot of um, prevention from expressing oneself. Uh, and especially growing up in, uh, say, a male dominant household, um, that could also um, be a lot of censorship, as well as um, a creative or individual expression. Um, but also for um, we, I have done this as well in the community. Uh, using art to talk about genocide and difficult uh, traumatic situations and how to uh, many, many people that have gone through trauma perhaps does not know how to talk about it or um, keeping it in, within themselves to protect their family or not wanting to relive that situation again with, without proper guidance, you know, um, it could, they could also go into uh, uh, re-traumatizing themselves. So um, uh, I, I went through a mental health training, uh, first aid training. So I, I was able to recognize some of these triggering uh, signs uh, to be able to direct people and um, uh, to use art to, to help them to talk about, you know, what they went through. And a lot of times, it's it's not your fault you know things circumstances and the situation are just done to you and then um once they get a reflection on that and they i i've seen positive results i've a lot of my work as well i've seen that and i use that as my own healing um great i'm glad you mentioned that because the next question was um was basically do you have any experiences or stories from Living Arts Long Beach that you'd like to share or from UCC that you'd like to share? Some, uh, something that might, you know, be um, something that really maybe triggered something within you or that you really appreciated or you took away some, something from? Um, yeah, there, there are a lot um, within the, uh, the milieu of the culture, right? Uh, we have our own culture of, of how people function people may, may say, you can't do that, or, or you're this way or that way, um, because they have brought their, their certain way of thinking with them. Uh, and that used to, to be triggering for me, you know, and it might, it, it, at one point, it would really shut me down, and it would trigger this, this really deep anger in me, because, <laughs> um, uh, and then I had to kind of especially when you're working with the public and the community, you get all kinds of folks, right? But you have to kind of check yourself before you what? Wreck yourself. Wreck yourself. (laughs) Uh, So um, you have to really be able to manage your emotions as well as um, uh, and see where people are at. You know, people are are coming through and they have their own challenges and you all, you, uh, I was able to learn to recognize that, and um, um, yeah, and and that's one example, especially with the older generation, right? Um, and even people my age that has grew up grew, has grown up in Long Beach uh, that had gone through the gang environment, you know, and um, growing up in the hood, as is what I tend to say with them, you know. And then we we came out of that. We are struggling with that. And I think a lot of us have started to lift each other up and embracing each other's greatness. You know, if you start to uh, to 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 hate others, uh, you, you really have to start to look in yourself and why you're doing that. Because you st- you got to love yourself before you can open up to love others. Definitely. It's, it's a great story. I really appreciate that. 
Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. It's a very precious like thing to hear. Um, so Living Arts uh, Long Beach has worked with the Long Beach Public Library. Uh, do you think it's important for local institutions and communities to collaborate with each other? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, I think, um, I mean, definitely uh, very important. Um, the, like the more I share about, you know, the, the, lo the, the local libraries and the resources that you all have, especially with the, the studio. Yeah. Is that the right name? The, the studio with, with all your equipments that you guys all have, you know, your computer, your music making, uh, your green screen. Uh, and I, I share that whenever I, I meet other artists, professional artists, kids, uh, just to let them know that there's like free resources out there, you know? <laughs> um, but but and not, not only that, that it's out there, but it's also showing support to each organization that we work with, right? It's, um, and we, uh, I, I think even within UCC community, we have other Cambodian organizations, but we all have specific uh, services that is for the community. And ultimately, uh, we, you know, we want to serve the community. Yes, sometimes we apply for the same grant or pots of grants out there and it's limited. But at the end of the day, we are out there to, to help the community and just to, to, make, to make their lives better. Definitely. Has working for Living Arts Long Beach and like the youth in general, has that influenced you as an artist in any way? Let's see, I don't know if it influenced me as an artist. It, um, it, it does make me want to, to see how effective I am with them. You know, I wanna be, um, uh, you know, I wanna be a good resource. I, I wanna be able to direct them the right way uh, give them the best advice I can, you know, depending on their needs. Um, the, um, I, yeah, I, I think as far as the artist part, I, I think that's kind of my, in my own world, mm -hmm. but the living arts one is, is for the kids or working with other artists. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's, that's great that you're able to, you know, separate the two and, you know, be distinctive between we you know what 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 drives your art and what drives you to give back to the community because I could see where you know one might not influence the other, but you know you're still able to you know to to juggle both both realms and you know and continue to contribute to both platforms, which I think is I, there's something there like you know when you're able to prioritize your art and prioritize your community. There's I think that's uh. I don't know. I don't know what to say other than props. Like it's good that you don't let it, you don't let them like cross over into one another. Um, yeah, I I think it's important to note that you know when people are like a te in a teacher role, and then when they go home they become like I say a parent role. Um, you really have to to learn. You can't assume that that person is the same throughout. You know, if, if I'm somebody's supervisor, then during work time I'm your supervisor. You know, if if when I go out on the street or when off, we're off the clock, now we're, we're friends. You don't need to report to me or anything, you know? It's like, so yeah, I, I think it's important to keep that distinction. Yeah. Speaking of uh, going out into the streets, um, what's your favorite mural in Long Beach? Oh gosh, I saw that question go by and I'm torn. Uh, I really, I, I honestly, I really enjoy, I know you're probably thinking this is, oh uh, yeah, of course, but David Van Patten's mural is, is awesome. I mean, he has this style of, um, uh, what's the word? It's, it's like dream light state. It's, it's a combination of a visual image and kind of turning things upside down on its head, which I like. And also he, he you can tell when it's his mural throughout Long Beach. Yeah. Um, but then when I when I go to, um, there's a place near Junipero, Junipero and Broadway. I, I don't remember who that is. It looks like it's, it's a picture of this this huge girl and she looks like she's hypnotized. Yeah. So That's, I've seen that, huh? 
I was just gonna say, yeah, that's uh, that's on the side of a salon at Broadway. Yeah, yes. there's, there's like all these yeah. like geometric patterns, right? Right. Yeah, that's a great one. I yeah. saw that, and then there's a few other ones I've seen in downtown Long Beach too. So I like them. I guess I don't have a uh, like a favorite one, but I think there's really good ones, and there are some bad ones out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, yeah, that's that's honest. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that, that mural you mentioned on the side of the salon, I actually helped paint that and drive the oh. lift with the artist. So I, ha I have a personal attachment to it. So I'm kind of uh, kind of pumped that you actually mentioned that one. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that's where that one is. And it's bigger than I thought, you know? Good, good thing he didn't roast you already. Good thing he wasn't like, you know what? I don't have any favorite murals, but I want to list the ones that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> No, maybe off camera. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's so much art in Long Beach. Where there's bound to be some bad art, for sure. Um, well, how about more general? Like, what are your favorite places in Long Beach? Whether um, it's restaurant, food, parks. Uh, let's see. The some favorite places. I I really enjoy people watching. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, especially hanging out in, in coffee house. There are a lot of interesting characters. People look all decked up or they just look like they're homeless, but they're like probably millionaires. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so some of them are like the portfolio is good. Venta Yagua, when it was open, it was good. They're, they're still open for like from seven to one though. But um and I, I, I really enjoy going to bars, happy hours, you know, like Joe Joust is, is fun to hang out. Um, and some of the Cambodian restaurants, uh, Crystal is, is really uh, a hole in the wall, but their food is awesome. Uh, off on the, near uh, Orange and 10th Street right there. Um, and Phnom Penh Noodle which is a mom and pop place as well, family owned. It's like on the corner of 15th Street and Cherry Avenue. So that's a really small place too, but um, there's a lot of gems in Long Beach. Although I used to enjoy going to Second Street, you know, Belmont Shores. It seems so sterile now. I don't know, is it just me? Uh, I've driven by there. There's still people partying at Panama Joe's. <laughs> Like, um, but yeah, it, it's, it's a bummer to see everything shut down. You know, I used to, I, I miss like the summer times in Long Beach for my favorite time, you know, second street, they had the stolen saver and then they had the movies on the beach in different locations and then all the great music events mm -hmm. and all the local bars for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I think, I think a lot of the hot spots, I think a lot of the hot spots have lost their the vibrance that they, that used to be there, you know? It's just, you know, things are kind of in limbo still. So it's not what it used to be because things are not what they used to be. So, you know, it is what it is now. But I think that's what kind of maybe challenges us to actually notice some of the nuances that are there during this weird time because we have to seek it out because we're not getting what we used to. But there's still little pieces and fragments of it there, I think. I guess it just depends on how you perceive it. But uh, mm. um mm. We're almost we're almost towards the end, Seon. So uh, I, do have, I do have a question. Um, what would you like to see happen within the art community in Long Beach? Um, wow, that's like a, a loaded question, I think, you know. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's like a, uh, I, I would really love to see the art community in Long Beach be like a model uh, where uh, Culver City is happening, although that it would take the um, the money to do that, uh, as well as um, the galleries and investment to come in, and it would also take uh, people spending more money here locally too to help support the artist. Um, but you know, it I I don't know if you guys have heard about the compound Long Beach. That's awesome new place that's happening uh, almost on the corner of, it's on Coronado and Anaheim. 
just go north a little bit. Uh, so that's an amazing place. I've worked with with them, and uh, they were, you know, they just got uh, did a soft opening where it's going to be in person. Um, but they feature my work, and so kudos to to them. Uh, it's it's compoundlbe.com. If you guys want to look that up. Uh, but they're n not just that they're featuring my work, but they're just amazing people and very inclusive, but they also want to include local artists, but they also want to emphasize quality, right? So yeah, yeah usually, uh, also at the end, we usually ask people if they, uh, they have a platform they'd like to share so that people can find you online. Do you have an online presence that you'd like to let people know about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you guys want to follow me on um on Instagram, I am at Sayon Art. It's S A Y O N Art on Instagram, and then uh, my full name is Sayon Cypressuth on on Facebook. Um, I don't do too much on on the other ones, so but yeah, I mean, connect with me, uh, uh, chit chat about collaborating and and doing various projects. Uh, I'm I'm working on uh, a community. Uh, mural again coming up and hopefully next within this next two months yeah we'll cool. see well, i'm excited to see what you do with the compound um it's unfortunate that like the pandemic kind of coincided with you know their opening but I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it in person one day or even online when they post photos of it but thank oh yes you for sharing your time yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us today, Sam. I know you have a busy schedule, so uh, it's great to have you on the web chat Wednesdays. Thanks, Chris and Artie and Ryan behind the scene. It's great sharing. Thank you for you all for listening to my story and and about my work.